Should Christians pay tithes? Okay, hello everybody. We're going to do a study on this. Now there's been a lot of uh, stuff probably posted about this, but I bet you've never heard it this way. I'm going to explain all about tithing and whether a Christian should pay tithe or not. We'll look at that. And who do you pay tithe to? So there's a lot of questions here that we can answer. So let's get started and see how it goes. This is the blueletterbible.org that I use quite often. It's very handy for studying the Bible. I'll show you some a pretty handy way to look up some verses by searching the Hebrew word. This is sort of where tithing all started. Genesis 14, 18. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was a priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him, and he said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him tithes of all. So Abraham gave the king of Salem tithes of all. So who is this Melchizedek king of Salem? Well, if you look at it in the Hebrew language, there's Melechi Zedek. That is king of righteousness. Zedek is righteousness. Melech, see there's Melech. Melech, king of righteousness. Shalom, peace. So his name is Melchizedek, which means king of righteousness, and he's the king of peace, or a place called Salem. And, and if you look in the book of Hebrews in the New Testament, they, the, the writer presents a picture of Melchizedek, the king of righteousness, uh, prince of peace, is a, uh, a picture of Jesus Christ and Jesus is our high priest who offered himself as an offering to God for our sins. So you'll see how that all fits in. Now Abraham gave to Melchizedek a tenth of all. Right here. Tithes of all. Now tithes is right here. This word Ma aser. See that that's the English word tithes. It actually literally it translates as a tenth. He gave him a tenth of all. So if you look here, hit click on the Strong's number, and that's for this word. And there you go, there's the meaning, a tithe, a tenth, tenth part. Um you scroll down, it's got the uh Brown Driver Briggs entry from lexicons. It's got the Jesenius lexicon entry. But if you go all the way down here, it shows you every verse where this Hebrew word, tenth, shows up in the Bible. And it's a, it's a pretty accurate way to search. It's better than, it. you know, when you search the English word, you don't know if you're getting a bunch of different Hebrew words that are being translated into that English word. But if you search the Hebrew word, you know you're searching the same Hebrew word. So you're bypassing the translation a bit and getting everywhere where it actually says that word, tithe or, or tenth. So... It's a pretty handy way to look things up sometimes. So if we look at here, I'm just going to breeze through this because it's pretty easy to see. Um, now in Leviticus chapter 27, we see this is where God is giving the law, the law especially of the Levites, the priests. He says, And all the tithe of the land, the tenth of the land, whether of the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, it is God's. It is holy to God. Okay? And, and if a man will at all redeem aught of his tithes, 
he shall add thereunto the fifth part thereof. So there's a lot of laws regarding tithes. Concerning the tithe of the herd or the flock, whatever passes under the rod or whatever is born, whatever is counted, the tenth shall be a holy to the Lord. And I have given the children of Levi all the tenth. So the children of Levi, that's the tribe of Levi out of the twelve tribes. Uh, the tribe of Levi became the priesthood. The, they all became priests. And they were given, when, when each, each tribe was allotted land, the Levites were not given like one section of the land of Israel. They were given cities within every tribe and so that they could serve as the priesthood of God to the people. And the people were to give their tithes to the Levites. So this is supporting the Levites because rather than farming, the Levites were, were being priests. So they were serving God and... Um, you know, they had to be supported. So God was giving this tenth to the priests to support them. And then the, the tithes of the children of Israel, which they offer as a heath offering to the Lord, I have given to the Levites to inherit. Therefore, I said to them among the children of Israel, they shall have no inheritance. Like they shall have no land of their own other than their certain cities within each tribe. Okay. Thus speak to the Levites and say to them, When you take of the children of Israel the tithes which I have given you from them for your inheritance, then you shall offer up a heave offering of it for the Lord, even a tenth part of the tithe. So, the, so when the Levites received the tithe, the tenth of everything from Israel, from all the farmers and all the children of Israel, they were to offer a tenth of that to God as an, as an offering. And you shall offer all your tithes which you receive of the children of Israel, and you shall give the Lord's heath offering to Aaron. So the tenth from all the, the, tenth from all the priests goes to Aaron, the high priest. So he got a tenth of everything the Levites got. And the tither shall bring your burnt offerings and your sacrifices and your tithes and heave offerings and your vows and your free will offerings and the firstlings of your herds and your flocks. So this is all the duties that they shall bring, right? And there, there shall be a place which the Lord your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. That ended up being Jerusalem in later times. There is where you shall bring all, all I command you, your burnt offerings your sacrifices, your tithes, because that later became to support the temple and the priesthood was in the temple. You may not eat within your gates the tithe of your corn or your wine or of your oil or the firstling of your herds or of your flock or any of the vows which you vow, nor your free will offerings or he the offerings of your hand. So, I think what he's saying is, okay, when you bring their tithe of your corn and your your herds and everything to the temple, then they would sacrifice them and have a big feast. And they would invite people to partake of that feast. So you are not to eat it within your gates, like to yourself. You were to bring it to the temple or to the feast, right? Take heed of yourself you, that you do not forsake the Levite as long as you live upon the earth. We understand tithing. We're not going to learn anything new here about tithing. It's a tenth to support the priesthood. Now in Malachi is when we get... Uh, he's the last prophet of the Old Testament. The newest prophet in the Old Testament is Malachi. Okay? And Malachi talks about, well, you'll see what he says here. Will a man rob God? Now, this is God um, saying, this is why I have left you. This is why I have changed the way I'm going to do things. 
I'm no longer doing it through you people because you cannot do what I'm asking you to do. You're not capable. And, you know, it's, it's always like it, everything in your heart, there's too much pride in your heart. You, you're not keeping my laws properly. You're not doing anything, any of my ordinances properly. And then one of the things he brings up is tithing. He says, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, how have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me. Even this whole nation. Bring you the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open to you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Everything will work for you. And all the nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delight some land, says the Lord of hosts. So, You'll hear this often, this this particular verse here, often quoted by churches asking for tithes, right? If you pay your tithes, God will open the storehouse of blessing for you, and you will not be able to, to retain it, and it will be so great, and everything will work out for you. Does this apply to Christian churches? Do Christian churches, are they the like the Levites, the priesthood? And do they collect tithes uh, from the people, just like in ancient Israel? Well, let's take a look at the Christian scriptures now, and we'll look at uh, where tithing is talked about. Okay, for the Christian scriptures, I'm going to use the sword project. You'll find that at uh, Crosswire Bible so Society. It's a, a new application. It's free. It's absolutely free. It's pretty good. It takes a little bit of work to set it up. Um, you can download the Windows version. It comes, a, it comes already packed with the King James version on it and with the Strong's numbers. You can go up to the top here click on options, turn on Strong's numbers, and then it, every word has a number from Strong's attached to it, right? And you hover on it and it'll bring up the Strong's definition of it, which is pretty good. I'll turn that off right now. And you can also download a whole host of other I got Wycliffe on here, Wycliffe's Bible. I got Tyndale's Bible. I got the Texas Receptus on here. It's in Greek. I don't know why it's not showing up right now. Masoretic text. Uh, oh, you know why? Because I'm on Genesis. That's why it's not showing up because the te Textus Receptus is only New Testament. Okay, Matthew, so if you, there's the Texas Receptus. So, you know, there's the uh, Septuagint. That is only the Old Testament, so you're not going to see Matthew in there. But you get the idea. You can download all these things and add them, but it does take some work. It's, it's a little bit crazy. Okay, so now we're going to look at Matthew chapter 6. Verse 1, this is Jesus talking. Take heed that you do not your alms. Alms, what's that? Giving to the poor. Okay, you're not going to find tithing in the New Testament. Uh, but you're going to find alms. Okay. That you do not give your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. 
Therefore, when you do your alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do. You know, they, they, they're so proud of what they give, and, and what, everything they give, they, they want recognition for it, you know. As the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily, or truly, I say to you, they have their reward. So that's their reward, is all that pride. That's their reward for paying the money. But when you do alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. I think that sort of means don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. That your alms may be in secret, and your father which sees in secret himself will reward you open, openly. So when you just do, don't let even your left hand know what your right hand is doing. When you give money to the poor or give charity, um, and God will see you. God will reward you. Let God deal with it. Don't even think about it. Okay. But if you go blowing a trumpet ahead of yourself, sounding a trumpet, and having a parade, then that's your reward. You had you, you had a great time. Luke chapter eleven verse thirty eight. And when the Pharisee when the Pharisee saw it, he marvelled that he had not first washed before dinner, because they were eating with unwashed hands. And the Lord said to him, Now do you Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. You fools did not he that made that which is on the outside make that which is on the inside also? But rather, instead of doing all this clean stuff, you should give alms of what you have, and behold, all things are clean to you. Okay? You give to the poor, give to those in need, and behold, all things are clean to you. So when you um, give charity to help others, then God has shines his righteousness on you. He shines he, he looks with, upon you with favor because that's a good thing to do. I mean as long as you're not blowing a trumpet ahead in yourself, ahead of yourself, and um, so that's a very key thing to understand. Um, but he says, "Woe to you, Pharisees, legalists, for you tithe mint and rue, and all manner of herbs. So every little herb that people buy and sell, you tithe it. It's like a tax." And you pass over judgment and the love of God, but you forget about the love of God. These ought you have done, and not to leave the other undone. So you should have done both. Luke chapter 12, verse 33. Sell all that you have and give alms, give to charity. Provide yourselves bags which are not old which don't get old, a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief comes to take it, and no moth corrupts it. So giving alms is like collecting treasure in heaven. And where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So your heart will also be my treasure is in heaven with God. That because of this money, this uh, because I help people who are in need, that's my treasure in heaven. And these are those servants who, when the Lord comes, shall find watching. Acts chapter three. Now Peter and John went up together. So who do you give alms to, right? Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, bring, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, the Beautiful Gate, right? 
to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. So he was begging there with not being able to walk. So that's who receives the alms, is people in need. I, I say any, any people in need, really, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, he said, Look on us. And he gave heed to them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I have none. Peter had no money. But such as I give, I, such as I have, but such as I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And then he walked. And so there's two important things to get from this is the the alms is going to people begging, like people like that, people in need. And Peter was he was like the the, the one of the chiefest apostles and he had no money. And we'll look at Acts chapter ten, verse one to four. There was a certain man in Caesarea that was on the, on the coast. There was a port city built by Herod, named after Caesar, right? His name was Cornelius. He was a centurion. He was a, sol a Roman soldier of the band called the Italian Band. So he was not a Jew. He was a Roman. A devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people, and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision, evidently, about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying to him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid, and he said, What is it, Lord? And he said to him, Your prayers and your alms are come up for a memorial before God. So God is about to repay you for all these alms and prayers. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. So then he, he met with Peter, and Peter preached the gospel to him, and he became a Christian. That was a very famous thing. And this is where Peter learned that God is sending the gospel to the Gentiles. Like, he's sending a Roman soldier to become a Christian? It was one of the first ones. All right, so we looked at sort of what alms are like in the New Testament. He, talk, he doesn't talk much about tithing. Um, Jesus criticizes them for the way they tithe. Uh, you're taxing everything, even spices, even even one grain of salt, you put a tithe on it, but you don't remember the love of God. So without the love of God, it's worthless. It doesn't mean anything. This is the lesson of, of the teachings of Jesus. Uh, but he's saying you ought to have done both. Okay? So now... How much do you pay? And who do you pay it to? Is the question. And should you pay? Or you give alms to the poor. How much should you give? Um, you give a tenth of everything you have to the poor. Is this what God wants? Or what is the... Is it still a tithe? Like what's, what, Here's the question that we have. Uh, do you give it to the church, the tenth of everything you have to the church, to help the church save more people, or whatever they do? Let's take a look. Mark twelve forty one. And Jesus sat over against the treasury, and behold, how the people cast money into the treasury. And many that were rich cast in much. Because at the temple they had like a box at the doorway, you know, where you put money in. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, like two cents. 
which make a farthing. And he called unto him his disciples, and he said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow has cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want, of her little, did cast in all that she had, even all her living. See, so it's more about percentages than it is about how much. Okay, Luke chapter 18, verse 18. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except for one, that is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. And he said, All these I have kept from my youth up. Now Jesus heard these things. He said to him, You yet you lack one thing. Sell all that you have, and distribute to the poor, and you shall have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. When he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hard shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? It's easier for a camel to go through the needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. So, yeah, if you, if you have many, many riches and you're not giving anything to the poor, it's, it's very difficult for you to uh, give... Uh, you know, say if you're a multi-billionaire, you're going to give 10% or are you going to give like 0.0001%? You know, it's, it's about percentages. So, uh, sell all that you have and distribute it to the poor and come and follow me. So he gave up a discipleship. He could have been a disciple of Jesus, right, walking on the earth. And he gave that up because he had too much money. He didn't want to lose his business. So you can see with Jesus, in Christianity, it's not 10%. It's 100%. Now, in verse 18... Now, before we move into the next section, I want to do one verse here. A lot of people like to go to Matthew 24 because it uh, talks about the end of the world. But this is Matthew chapter 23. And this is very important to understand. Jesus spoke to the multitude and to his disciples. So it's not only for his disciples, it's for everyone. And he said, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All, therefore, whatever they ask you to observe, that observe and do. But do not do what they do. For they say what to do, but they don't do it. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But in all their works they do to be seen of men. They do it all to be the top dog and be, be appraised by everybody. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. Now, phylactery is like uh, the Jews wear these. It's like a necklace thing on their throat that has the Bible in it, um, or it's on their shoulder. They make that really big, and they make the, the, the edges of their robes really big with big fancy designs, you know, so they look real holy is, is basically what he's talking about. They enlarge the borders of their garments, and they love the uppermost rooms at feasts, 
and the chief seats in the synagogues. So these are like the elites, right? And greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be you not called Rabbi, which means master, for one is your master, even Christ. So Christ is your master, not any man, okay? And all you are brothers. This is for Christians. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven. And that's the Holy Father that Jesus has, his father. That's our father too, because we are all brothers. Neither be you called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whoever shall exalt himself shall be humbled. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. So this is very important. So the, the, in the Hebrew system of the system of Moses, they had the chief priest and then they had the other priests and then they had the people. And so there was this hierarchy where the people had to go to the priest to deal with God. And they, and the priest had to go to the high priest who was the authority over everyone. And then the high priest would, would, was the only one allowed directly into the temple, into the inner temple, before the ark of God. But it's not that way with Christians. We have one master, who is Yeshua, is the, the, the way, uh, the Hebrew way to say it. Um, the Greek way would be Yesu, and the English way is Jesus. So that's our master, and we have one Father, one God. Okay, Jesus Christ is God in the flesh, and He is God's king who he has set on the throne over all men and he is god god in the flesh but there's god outside of the flesh which is like in all of the universe which is the same god and that's the father the creator the the, the originator and christ is the the king the king over mankind Okay, so, but there is no other hierarchy, is the point. That every Christian, we are all brothers, and Jesus called us brothers. He said, I am not ashamed to call you brothers. You are my brothers. You're my friends. So, we are at an equal level with Christ through the flesh, being in the flesh, as a man but he is at a higher level because he's the king and he is directly connected to God but so we go through Christ to God so we pray to God in the name of Jesus Christ and we are all brothers there's no other part to this hierarchy so this is when we get pastors and priests they tend to set up this hierarchy where because they are the more educated and they are the they they spend mo their most a lot of their time studying uh the scriptures and the original languages so yes they are teachers and every christian has a role to play there's teachers there's prophets there's there's uh workers and they're all equal before God. So there's no hierarchy to uh, to talk to God. You can talk to God yourself. But you can have a teacher that can help you learn how to better serve God. 
and there, that's a good role to play but it's, there's no hierarchy to get to God is the point now let's take one more look at one more thing here Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests so he's the prince of the kings we are the kings He's the chief of the kings, is what it should say. And he made us kings and priests to God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So, we are kings and priests. All of us. All Christians. You have, you have to play a role of a king and a priest. It's like a... A man in his home is the king and the priest of the home. You can look at it that way, but the woman is also a queen and a priest. Because we all have to work out our salvation. Revelation chapter 5 verse 9 And they sung a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the book and to open the seals. For you were slain and has redeemed us to God by your blood out of every family and tongue, every language, and every people and every nation. And you have made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Revelation chapter 20 verse 5. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So Christians are kings and priests is the point. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. You also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So that's the temple. Um, the body of Christ is the body of all believers they are the temple of the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit dwells within us we are the temple of God and so we are priests in the temple so after looking at all that what are we gonna say in the Old Testament tithing was to support the Levitical priesthood and to support the temple in the New Testament, for Christians, there is no tithing. That, that It's not a tenth. It's a hundred percent. And um, and we are all kings and priests. So we all receive the tithes, I guess. We, uh, we should have given everything away that we own. And we... We beg and receive alms from others, and um, and we give a hundred percent. That's that's the demand of the gospel. So, how do I handle that? Like I I'm I live in a house, obviously, <laughs> you know. Like um, the way I handle it is, I just look at. That a hundred a hundred percent of everything I own really belongs to God, and I try to give what I can to charity. I, I try to be generous, um, and I try to rule my life as if 
it really belongs to God and all my money too as if it belongs to God so so it really kind of changes your perspective on what you spend your money on and you know that's not exactly what Jesus said but um, that's what I do I think it's every Christian is a king and a priest so you you know you do what you think you should be doing with that information but that's the information that's what we have um, you know you can understand a church and a pastor they have a they have a mortgage <laughs> they have uh, the building maintenance to take care of and they need money so they're of course they're going to tell you to tithe even though it's not really what the Bible says. Um, the Bible says you should be giving 100%. So you can do what you want with that, uh, with that information. Um, people in history have done that. They have given away everything they had and become poor for God. And some famous people now... You know, I can't say how that works out for everybody. Um, and that's between you and God, is all I can say. Um, I've told you what I do anyway. So it's a humbling teaching, really, With if you really think about it. Um... You know, and everything that Jesus talks about is very humbling. Very humbling. If you really look at what Jesus taught, is the Old Testament is easier, really. Because the New Testament demands everything. So, I just try to view my life in that way. And... Especially if, if you have kids and you have all this other stuff, what are you going to do? Like, um, put your kids on the streets? I don't know. If, I don't know. You know, the, the, the early Christians, they lived like a convent. They lived like a commune. And they all lived together. And everyone that joined the church gave everything they had to the church. And I guess they worked together. And they earned together. And that's the way they lived. So, I don't know if you want to try that. And you can ask David Koresh about that. Um, that's kind of a scary thought these days. So, you know, maybe there are places like that. I don't really know about them. Um, I'm more myself just my take care of my myself as an individual and just try to lead lead a lead a godly life and be honest be just and be generous is about all I can say is it's up to you what you're gonna do but there's no command from God about giving a tenth of every you everything you had to to a uh, Christian church it just not, doesn't exist but it's more than that a lot more than that so I'll see you next time I hope you enjoyed this uh, this um, teaching and uh, I'd like to hear what your thoughts are about the whole thing of tithing Christians tithing and don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time Thank you.